Well, here we are. Two o'clock on the dot, my time. Um, and I forget what time it is over in Austria and Germany. Um, hi, everyone. Nice to see you. Angelica, Sasha, Ina, Jeanette, Jerry. Um, <clears throat> thanks for showing up. Uh, hoping you can hear me okay. Please let me know if you don't hear me. Um, that That's never good. Um, uh, and also, um, it, because it's happened so many times, I'm expecting that my phone's just going to kick out at some point. And please be patient with me uh, while I get it going again. For whatever reason, it just does it every time just to, you know, trouble me, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, anyhow, let me know if you can hear me and you can see me and everything is okay. Uh, anyone who's uh, wants to make a comment, that would be great. Um, okay, thumbs up. Thank you, Ina. This is great. Um, okay, so this is, uh, well, it's an interesting subject. Um, this is, I've, I know I've talked about this in past uh, streams. So, uh, but I want to get into this in a little more detail this time. Uh, when we are uh, looking at anything, um, you know, we can't look at everything in focus. And I, I, I think I've done this example in, in a past stream. If you were to look at one of my eyes, the other one is going to be out of focus. It's just the way we see. You can't look at both of them in focus at the same time. So um, the major part of our eyesight is peripheral. So the periphery, all the stuff around what we're looking at is the major part of our visual field. So when you think about that, um, you know, we paint a lot of things in detail. That's, it's just kind of in our nature to do that. Well, we're looking at something, we're trying to um, imitate or try to draw or paint the thing that we're looking at specifically. So, um, you know, this is, this is a... a a very interesting subject because if you look at Rembrandt's paintings, and I know I've mentioned him before, uh, you'll see that he actually understood this idea of painting the peripheral. Uh, everything doesn't have to be in focus. So before I get into all of that stuff, um, before I do this demo, um, I just want to thank you, first of all, for showing up again. Um, it's really great, you know, the, the People who are, are following, I, I really appreciate when you do, uh, and I appreciate your comments and your thumbs up, of course, and I appreciate you passing the link on to other people who you think might be interested in this. Um, this is helping. It encourages me to keep doing this. Um, I can't believe it's like number 28 already, um, and I'm hoping that they're improving and getting better as I go. The technology, I maybe someday I'll actually figure it out. Um, but I, I think the, um, the sound is better I'm working on all that stuff. And um, uh, if you uh, have an opportunity again to pass the link on to let friends know or other artists, people who sometimes they just can't afford to take an art course, you know, younger people, even some older people who just are trying to figure out whether they want to try painting um, you know, it's a fun thing to do. It doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, this is really a lot of fun to do. And um, yes, it's work. Uh, if you want to learn how to paint, uh, it takes time and it takes patience. Like anything, you have to put in the hours. But there are hours of pleasure. And yeah, there are frustrating times. You sort of think, well, how come it doesn't look like the way I want it to look? Um, all of those questions can be answered. There are problems that, that can be solved, and an artist is always solving problems. That's what they're doing. When you're painting, you're learning how to solve problems, uh, and you do that through experience, and you also learn by watching other artists and listening to other artists and, and other teachers. So I'm hoping today will maybe inspire a little bit, because I think one of the things that I've learned over time is that um, we tend to do things the hard way. Like, you know, we think we have to draw everything very carefully. And of course, it's good to be able to draw. I, I understand that. 
you know, you want to get your colors correct. And yes, you know, you want to get your colors correct. That's true. Um, you, you work towards those things. But if you can get things right in the most important areas, so the focal areas, the focal points, the, the things that we want the viewer to look at, get those things right, there's a little bit of forgiveness in the other areas, in the peripheral. So if you're sitting in your room right now, you know, your studio, and you're looking at something across the room, like I'm looking at a painting on the wall, everything else is out of focus. Um, the colors I get a sense of, you know, the shapes I get a sense of, but I'm not actually looking at those things directly. And until I do, um, you know, they're not in detail, period. So how do you paint things in the peripheral or out of focus? All those areas that are in the peripheral support the thing that you're looking at. So that's something to think about. If you can imagine looking, and this is an exercise you can try, by the way, this is kind of a challenge. Um, it's a little bit strange to do initially, but if you can look at an object across the room and be aware of what's in the peripheral, so you're just aware of it, and go to your canvas and or your, your, your easel and try and paint what you see kind of out of focus over there. So looking at one area, knowing that that's the focal area, but get a sense of what's in your peripheral, either to the right or the left or above or below, and try and paint those things as you see them kind of out of focus. Um, there are two approaches to this, by the way, that, that I find, well, work for me, that, that I find are successful. One is to start with a focal area, really zoom in on that, get your details, get your drawing, get your colors and values, all of those things working in that area you want people to look at. And, and take your time and, and get that right. Measure if you need to, do all that stuff. And then work away from that. Um, I think I'm probably paraphrasing, but I know in Richard Schmidt's uh, book, uh, Ella Prima, Everything I Know About Painting, um, he, he basically says all you have to do is get the, uh, the right shape in the right place with the right value and the right color. And then you, you, the shape next to it, you do the same thing. And if you continue to do that, you end up with something that looks right because everything is related to each other. Um, so, you know, it's, a, it's sort of like walking a tightrope. You know, you, when you see somebody do that, they make it look easy because they've had practice and they've done this a lot. But uh, painting is really that. If you have the right shape, the right value, the right color, uh, you know, in the right place, uh, then uh, you just have to continue on that path. Now, when you start out getting things um, in the focal area in detail, you get all of that working. Um, as you start to paint, and it, it, it goes this way with me, anyhow, I can't speak for others, but you start to lose your mental focus or maybe your emotional focus, and you get a little tired. You know, it's you can go and have a break, have a coffee or something like that and come back to your work. But um, if you continue to paint and you're a little tired, you can actually start to make mistakes. Now, when I say mistakes, you can be looser on the outside areas that are just supporting the thing that's in focus. And when you do that, um, you force the viewer to look at the area that's in focus. We look at sharp edges, we look at chroma, we look at the most intense colors, um, and we, we look at, the, again, the sharpest edges and the greatest areas of contrast that creates a focal point. And, we, and I, I know that I uh, covered this in a past um, live stream. So the other, so that's one way of working. The other way of working is to try and get all your big shapes working. Um, and if you get all those large shapes working, then you start to refine, you start to define as you move in closer uh, to the focal area. Uh, and that's a whole different process because, you know, we do see the large shapes first. That's when we're walking down the street or, you know, we're going out, outside somewhere. We see the large shapes first and we understand those large shapes. 
And then we start to look into those shapes and we see more information and more detail. So uh, if you can imagine uh, this, uh, any of you have worked with a, you know, an older camera, for example, if you're looking through uh, the, the eyepiece in, in an older camera uh, and you're trying to you know, bring it into focus manually, so a lot of the cameras now, they just do it automatically. But if you're trying to bring it into focus manually, things are kind of all blurry everywhere. And then you kind of turn the lens uh, until you've got it to a point where the thing you want to be in focus is in focus. So that's kind of working from large shape to small shape, getting that area of focal point. The other way is, uh, you know, focusing on an area, getting that right. And then as you're as you and imagine this if you were painting you paint that area in focus and gradually pull the lens out of focus as you get to the outside edges um this imitates this idea of peripheral because peripheral is not in focus so it's also this this sense of depth of field any of you who have worked with cameras understand that you have this thing called depth of field where you can have uh, the foreground the midground or the background in focus with your camera but those other areas are out of focus related to them so you can have uh, focal areas that, that spread this way uh, on a plane from left to right and, and up and down or you can have something that works in depth of field um, it's really fun to look through an old camera lens and just play with that if you happen to have an old camera around um, i've got an ancient film camera and um I can look through this thing and, and I can see certain things out of focus and things in focus and I can play with the depth of field and it's very interesting to do this. Uh, when we're uh, be All right, I hope I hope this brings me back in. Okay, so sorry about this. Ha, huh, that kicked out really early. Very sorry. For some reason the stream I lost the stream. Um can you hear me now? I'm hoping that you can. All right. Uh, Daniel has written here, paintings can be anything from a highly detailed wide thing tempera to an abstract expressionist Jackson Pollock to a, cubist, a cubistic Picasso and anything in between. Yes, that's very true. Baron, thanks. I'm back. I'm hoping you can hear me. I really hope this doesn't happen a whole lot. This time it happened early. So um, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to take another device offline and hope that that actually makes a difference. And maybe this will help. We'll find out. Okay. All right. Let's hope that it holds this time. All right. Very strange. Okay. Uh, let's just 
crazy technology. Okay, um, maybe what I should do is just get to painting um, and show you what I'm talking about here instead of uh, uh, yakking away. But the idea here is that we want to create the sense of peripheral. So we're, we're painting things that aren't there. I, and that sounds kind of weird, but I'm not trying to paint every little detail. I'm not trying to, you know, paint exactly what I see in front of me. I want to get a feeling or an impression, if you will. And the Impressionists were very good at this, of course. If you look at Monet's paintings, a lot of them are completely out of focus. And yet we can still understand what the scene is about and what the information that he has left there is about, the sense of light and so on. So I'm going to be painting over some leftover paint um, that was, uh, well, I had on a canvas. I had a big canvas. And I just took part of this canvas and folded it over a board so that I can paint over top of leftover paint because it's all out of focus anyhow, kind of. It's hard to know what's there. And hopefully you're gonna see how this thing takes shape. Um, I'm not sure which way I'm gonna go. Whether I'm gonna go detail and out from that or whether I'm gonna do the big shapes and work towards the detail. Maybe I'll do a bit of both. Anyhow, I've pre-mixed some colors. Um, I won't go through all the colors right now with you. I just want to hope I'm just hoping this stream holds for us Okay, I'm gonna slide this over here and you can see this is um, <laughs> This is leftover paint which I have dragged uh, across a canvas um, And this is an old canvas. I think actually I brought this all the way from India if I'm not mistaken uh, when I was painting there, it was just leftover paint and I put it onto this long canvas. Um, so, what I want to do now is just give myself a sense of where things are. And I'm going to do this in a fairly loose fashion. I, th I think I'm going to try and work in a loose way and bring it more into detail as, as I go. So I'm going to take the lightest light that I have, which is going to be a sky and of course you can't see the image that I'm going to paint um, so I'm just going to start putting things in here very loosely and this is again working in a very soft manner I'm not putting very much paint down at this stage I'm just putting very a, a very light amount of paint uh, down here just to get uh, a sense of where things are going to go I'll get more detail into this later um, this is going to be kind of a sky area here. And you can see it's a very light touch. I just want to kind of sneak up on the image, if that makes any sense. And I have a very tiny little bit of drawing that I did ahead of time, which you can barely see. They're just little point, little accent points that I know I want to keep to. And these are kind of sky colors here. Now, one of the nice things, you know, <laughs> uh, this, this can actually, this will end up looking like a lot of different paintings as I go, I, I think. Um, and, but it should come together fairly quickly. I don't think this will be a long painting session if I do this right. Okay. That's just establishing a little bit of... Uh, a little of my lights that I want to get going in here and some of my shapes. This is almost like uh, if you've watched one of the previous um, programs or live streams that I did on no tens, this is almost like a reverse no tens. So, you know, I've got my kind of dark areas down. Now I'm just putting my light areas into that. And I'll come back and, and go into this in a heavier way. I'm just barely putting any paint down right now. And this also leaves me the opportunity, because I haven't put much paint down, it leaves me the opportunity to go back in and define and refine and change my colors and do all that kind of stuff later if I want to. All right. Um, Carl, nice to see you. Regina, nice to see you too, and Manny, uh, it's so great to see everyone here. Thank you for showing up today. I really do appreciate it. It makes me feel like I need to keep doing these things. 
Okay. Um, if you watched a, one of the earlier live streams when I was talking about Bernie Fuchs, Bernie Fuchs, as you might say in Deutsch, um, one of the things that he did was he would put color down and then he would take it out with Q-tips or with a brush and it would kind of leave a stain of, of color on the, the canvas. And um, it's a beautiful way to work. This is almost the same idea, except what I'm doing is I'm working this with opaque, semi-opaque paint at this point in time. And I'll go in with more opaque paint. And when I met Bernie, uh, one of the things he was working towards was trying to actually have more opaque paint going down instead of having it all thin everywhere. I'm going to take a Q-tip here and just take out a couple of shapes for the drawing side of this. You can see how thin this paint is. I can literally take it off. I dip a Q-tip into um, medium, into thinner, and I can take out my shapes. I can draw things in uh, here, this way, just taking the shapes out. Because I've got dark color underneath, um, this works kind of nicely. And we'll see where this goes. Painting with a Q-tip, or actually just taking paint away with a Q-tip, is kind of a fun way to work. Ah, Stefan is here too. Nice to see you, Stefan. I'm painting with Q-tips, Stefan. Or I'm not painting. I'm taking paint away with Q-tips. Again, just trying to get something going. And again, this is a very loose way of working. Just to try and get a sense of peripheral. I want to get this, this loose feeling going before I actually start to get into the detail area. So this is kind of almost like a camera out of focus. Okay, uh, let me grab a couple of other colors here and just drop them in. And again, I'm going very light with this color. This is not, I'm hardly putting any paint on my brush here. I'm just trying to get a a sense of what's going to happen here. I'm not committed to anything completely here yet. And this is a very gentle, soft approach. Almost, if I could say, almost a tonalist approach, although the tonalist probably would work things out in black and white first, um, and then go into things with color afterwards, building their image that way. Um, I'm just basically going straight in with color at this stage. And just the side of the brush. I'm not getting fussy. I'm holding the brush back fairly far here. So, you know, I, it's, it gives a loose feeling uh, when you do that. Uh, it gives a very relaxed feeling. It makes me feel relaxed when I hold the brush back further. And this is a nice way just to, to play with color, not commit too much to anything. And I do, you know, I do want to keep my drawing in mind, but I don't want to get crazy about it right now. I can go back and accentuate things more when I'm ready to do that. All right, I'm going to grab another color here. Let's just see what I can find. Just to bring a little more dimension into these areas. Now, the uh, light in this scenario here is cool. It's a cool lighting situation. Um, I've used cobalt blue in the sky here with white. And that's what's giving me those cool blues. And here I've got warmer greens going to the shadow areas. So cool light, warmer shadows, warm light, cooler shadows. It's something I go on about a lot, I know. 
And very quickly, this is a very uh, rough canvas, by the way, um, which I think I bought. I bought this canvas in Vienna, if I'm not mistaken. Bought a roll of it, and it's like a heavy linen kind of canvas. <clears throat> And I really like this stage a lot because so much is left to the imagination right now. Um, you know, this is this could turn into something really beautiful. It could go any direction, really. I don't want to overdo it. That's the thing. I, I'm just trying to go for an impression right now. Really, that's what I'm trying to do. I like some of the accidental things that happen through here. Um, sometimes it's really nice just to leave that stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. I might. I might not. I, I just see how it goes. I can always take the paint away. If I cover something that I liked before, I can always take the paint away again. So, maybe a little more intense color going in here. And I want to actually neutralize that a little bit more. When I say neutralize a color, I'm basically saying graying it down. And you can do that by mixing in the complement color. So with a green, you mix in a red, for example. Um, and that just neutralizes it. You can gray the color if you want to. There are a lot of different ways of neutralizing or knocking the chroma down. And again, I'm painting, I'm painting things that aren't there. Like all the textures in the canvas are really picking up on what I'm doing here. So it makes it feel like I've been painting a long, long time to get this, but actually I haven't. You know, very quickly you get a sense of what's going on. Somnath, nice to see you. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. Okay, I want to go into some darks because right now I've got a lot of light things going. I want to get into some darker areas just to get a sense of, you know, what this is going to be about. And pretty soon this will start to you'll start to know what this is, hopefully. Again, I want to start bringing uh, colors in that, that I want, that are just sort of color notes, if that makes any sense. Um, because I want to create interest in the color. I want to bring some intensity into the areas that uh, I want you to look at. It's a very, very soft approach to this. Uh, at a certain point, I can even get into a bit of palette knife work, but I won't do that yet. We'll just see how this goes with a brush. And again, because the canvas is such a heavy texture um, it's really working for me to give these nice soft transitions very natural feel to this letting the texture of the canvas do the work for you you know that's that's something to think about. And I don't want to get too fussy at this stage. I want to keep it loose still. But I also want to make sure that I'm careful enough that I don't have to go back and do a lot of correction. So, Cabin in the Woods. And what is he doing there? <laughs> That's bringing back memories. 
Studio memories. What is he doing in there? This cabin in the woods thing is really a theme. I keep coming back to this idea. There's something about nature against man and what we have created in nature. There's, um, I can't remember the name of the place. I've kind of stolen this, uh, this image from, um, uh, there's a place in Nova Scotia, actually, um, that uh, this couple from Toronto bought. And um, it has some history, and there are several cabins there. And uh, they display their um, this place online in a blog. Um, I think they even have a Facebook uh, page. It's very beautiful. It's a very Canadian kind of feel. And it's like a hundred years old, this place. And uh, it's a very beautiful place, very remote, uh, again, in Nova Scotia. And um, uh, they, uh, they're they off grid. So they're, you know, you, if you go there, you don't have any internet or anything like that. Um, and um, they're very much interested in the art community. And I think it'd be a great place to go painting. I would love to actually contact them and do some workshop stuff out there. And this is one of the cabins from, from that location. So you can see how I'm just sort of teasing the, uh, the values into shape. And it gives you a quick sense of um, what's there without getting really, really fussy about it. Like, I just don't want to, you know, start getting too crazy fussy with this. It looks better on my screen than it does in real life. That's funny. Sometimes that happens. Um, I want to go back into the sky now and just start to bring up a little more, uh, make it a little more opaque so I can get a little more sense of uh, commitment and dimension. And again, this can still be put on in a loose way. I don't have to, uh, I don't have to get too crazy about, you know, trying to get all the details in. Uh, I just really am wanting to get the sense or impression of what's going on here. And this is where you can kind of play with shapes. I'm not following exactly the photo that I'm working from. I want to create shapes that are interesting for me, that I think make maybe a better painting that way. Keeping it soft, just going into this and really just playing with it so that it feels like a place you'd want to visit. Looking at the shapes that nature give us and imitating that. Things should tie together a little bit. Now it's, when I look at this, there, it, there's sort of this chunky sky here and chunky sky there, but I want to get more. I want to get more of that, the foliage that I see there, into this area over here. So, be, so that it ties this shape together behind this structure. Again, that's not the way it is in the photo. 
but you can make it your way. I'm going to go into this with a couple more darks. All right. Now this is where I can take a palette knife and I can just uh, chunk in a little bit of solid color, maybe slightly lighter color, uh, just to pull an edge up here. This will be the, the focal area right there. It's a little palette knife work. I can soften it down around that, the edges of that. So that becomes a very specific focal point there. And if I want to create a real focal area, I should really put something dark against that as well. So let's just do that. And that brings out a little more detail. And I see there's some nice grays, which I don't have on my palette. So let's just make one up here. They're hap happening as these posts come in underneath this uh, belt, this uh, deck area or this balcony area, and just pop a couple of these areas in here. Getting a pattern going, getting a little bit of a rhythm going, which is nice. Now I haven't been very careful with that. Uh, and it doesn't matter because it's just paint. I can just swipe through this like this and you know get the drawing better. There we go. <laughs> Cover a photo for Deerslayer. Yeah, kind of does look like that. Maybe this is just a creepy place in Canada. Canada has a few of these creepy places, way out in the woods. So this is right now, I'm, I'm actually paying some attention to the detail in this area because I don't want it to get too, you know, I, can, I, I can be loose in a lot of places, but I really do want to be a little bit careful in the areas that need um, a little bit of finessing. Um, by the way, this is um, just so you know what this is. You know, you know what a mall stick is. But this is one of these um, things that holds your blinds up. It's an expansion bracket that holds your blinds up. Because I have no idea where my mall stick is. So, you know, anything will work. A piece of dowel or any straight edge that you can use as a mall stick just to guide your hand. Get a little bit of detail. I don't have the steady hand that I used to have when I was younger, so this is going to have to do the trick. Just to get that little zone working right there. All right. Okay. Now, I want to get into a little bit of sense of foreground. I want to, I want to get this, the feel that, you know, we can walk into this. Um, and again, this is loose. These are outside edges. I don't want to get too specific here. Because if I do, then your eye is going to be drawn away from the focal area. And I don't want to be doing that. So I want to take you back to the focal area with a little more intense color here. A few sharper edges, keep the outside edges softer. That's the idea here. I also want to get into these trees a little bit with a little more detail. And so I'm going to grab a different brush here. Okay, and I'll start out with 
a little darker color here, and then go over it with something even darker. You know, often we work from dark to light, but when you work this thin over color that's already there, you can go from light to dark. It's quite okay to do that. Anything that gives you strength in the image. And I have this tiny little brush here that will get it comes to a nice point. And I'll bring a little bit more detail into the branches. Again, it doesn't need a lot of detail to pull this off. I want to get just the feeling, the essence of what I'm painting here. Okay. Well, the other thing, um, there are some trees that are birch trees that are lighter in the foreground. So I'm going to try and imitate that. Uh, I want to do that with a palette knife, I think. Let's just see if we can make that work. This might be too light. We'll find out. Oh, it's not too bad. Okay. And I can pull this information together again with a, a finer brush. And maybe I have a, another tree in behind here that's a little lighter, or sorry, a little darker than that one. And I'm just dragging the palette knife down. It's giving me shapes. Again, I'm not really trying to create exactly what I see in the photo. I'm trying to get a sense of what's there without going crazy in detail. So I'm going to put a darker one in there. Just again, imitating. I don't want all my trees to be equal and even in size or shape. Negative shapes are important. Try to get your negative shapes working. And pick up some colors just to create a little more interest here and there. You can use all kinds of different colors in a, in a situation like this. Because that's what light does. It gives us loads of different color options. Um, I'm going to go into these areas here now with a bit of palette knife just to pull a little more of the green that we're seeing here and bring the eye up into this area. I do like the texture that's happening in this canvas. It's really working for me. I want to get a little bit of a lighter sense happening in this uh, building behind needs to be just a touch warmer, touch lighter. Now, I pre-mix a lot of colors, but you can't pre-mix every one. So, you know, take your time to do that. Uh, mix up a bunch of colors that, that you think you're going to need. It's funny, because sometimes I think I'm going to need a color, and then I never end up using it. But get something going, so it gives you a base to work against. You can always push the color one direction or another, and it gives you what you need. I'm just blabbing on here, sorry. I don't really know what I'm talking about. I'm just blabbing on. Okay. 
painting with Stefan was great because he just put some music on in the background. And we would just like, you know, listen to the music. He'd be dancing around the studio. And uh, we had such a blast painting together. Sometimes we didn't talk at all, and other times we just talked like crazy. So, you know, if, you, if there's someone you can work beside or with in a studio setting, first of all, it's a great thing, and it's, it's a really, it's a privilege if you can find someone you can work with that way. Not everyone can. Some people have to live, uh, work in solitude. And I'm a talker, so when I get working and start yakking away, it probably drives some people crazy. But for these live streams, I sort of feel like I need to fill in the spaces, so. Okay, I don't want to go too crazy back there because I'm starting to get a little bit, well, you know, a little bit too much information. Um, so a good question here, uh, Samnath. Seems all about when you want to stop. I don't know if that makes sense, but when you want your focal area to come through, all you need to know is when to stop. Um, yeah, and you know, sometimes it's really hard to know when to stop um, because the problem with this is, you know, it's so much fun to do this uh, and it's fun to paint these things and uh, sometimes you can just take it too far. Uh, if you, you can lose the freshness of something like this in a hurry if you take it too far. So when to stop? That's, that's a super good question because it really is up to you. I mean, that's where, you know, you're the artist and you have to decide. But before you start, you should have a sense or an idea of what you want this to look like, at least in your mind. Uh, if you have a sense of what this could look like as a painting ahead of time, and, you know, not to be so committed that you can't change as you go, um, but I want to get, I want to have this sense of wanting to get into this. I want this idea of foliage in the foreground, you know, we're in a forest setting. I want some of these colors to peek through that were interesting, that were there to begin with. Um, let, the, let the texture that's underneath work. Um, and be committed to making a good image. Don't be committed to saying, well, it has to be like this because that's what the photograph says. Um, we're making a painting. We're not making photos, right? So that's just something to keep in mind as you're painting. You're really trying to make an image that allows certain things to, to come together in the imagination. And that's one of the things that I really love about paint because it doesn't tell the whole story. Um, you know, we can, sometimes we put in too much. There are a few guidelines that, that I sort of follow when I'm doing these kinds of things. Larger shapes are in the foreground, generally. I mean, that's a large shape, but you know, that's a different kind of shape to what nature is. The larger shapes are in the foreground, the smaller ones are in the background, and they tend to be there's less contrast of value in the background than there is in the foreground. But of course we have a shadow that's coming in underneath this building here. So, um, and it's also a focal area. So there are a lot of things that I'm trying to balance here to make this work, uh, to make it believable and still holds together as a, a painting. I'm looking forward to painting again with you, Nuzel. Can't wait. I have to talk in, into coming back to Canada again. And of course, I want to paint over in Austria with you too. So um, I'm going to introduce another color. It's a little cooler color because the sky is a cooler blue. Um, I'm going to have this 
uh, blue that I mixed up ahead, blue green that I mixed up ahead of time, which is a cooler color. And if you look at leaves carefully, you'll see that they often pick up the um, the the color of the sky. They pick up the color of the light from the sky. That color is reflected into them. So you have this sort of thing happening. And again, I'm just really throwing it down here without getting too fussy. I want some darkness here. I want us to, uh, our eyes to come up towards this area, which looks like, well, we're coming home. You know, it's a safe place to be. And these violets that you see in here, those are just quite incidental. Um, they happen to be the colors that were already on the canvas. So that's kind of a bonus when, when that happens. I'm going to put another, another tree in over here. I want to kind of, I'm going to darken this one down a little more, give that a little more weight. And then I want to put another one in over here that's just kind of balance that out a little bit. Always thinking about rhythm. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like odd numbers. So I'm going to put in another one over here. It makes it nine. Don't ask me why. It's just informal composition that way. Make that a little bit heavier because it feels like it should be. Every tree needs a friend. <laughs> it's true. And they should be close enough that they get along, but far enough away that they have their own individuality. Just like humans. Now this is where I have to watch it because this is where the illustrator comes out in me because I, you know, I think I know what branches look like. Well, I should really look at my reference and, and make sure that I'm not just putting something in just because I think I know what branches look like. Use your reference. I want to make this building a little bigger here. And I also want to pull out a little of the edge of that building there. Maybe a little over here, too. And it's starting to feel okay. All right. I want to punch in a little bit more of that lighter green, just in a couple of spots here. Again, this is the green that's picking up the, the color of the sky. Maybe it even picks up over here a little. So I'm not, I talk to myself all the time. It, sometimes it's in my head. Um, you know, I, Sometimes I tell myself, like, that just doesn't work, or why did you do that? Or We criticize ourselves when we're working sometimes, but it's also good to pat yourself on the back when it's going well. I think that's important, too, because we're hard on ourselves as artists. We really are. We, we, we tend to beat ourselves up. So when it goes well, you should tell yourself, you know what, that's going well. Um, keep it up. That's... This could be nice. And to believe that you can do this. Because you can. Why not? Now I'm going to put a couple of darker areas over in here. I don't know what's going on out here. Um, I sort of feel like maybe it could even use like
studio. Okay, I'm back again, so sorry. Maybe the machine said I was talking too much. Hopefully you can hear me again. Sorry about that. All right, whenever that happens, it's a little disconcerting. Um, all right, I'm going to go, hope you can hear me, let me know if you can't. I, it just, this connection cuts out now and then, and it resets or something, I have no idea what it's doing. Okay, thanks Moni. One of these days, I'll actually have a connection that works, imagine. Okay, just going to put a little more into the sky here, let it soften off, and a few little branches here and there. I want to, I want to have a path that kind of brings us into this area here now. So I'm going to try and create, again, I don't want to get too literal, but I want to pick up on the light that's happening here and give us a little path that gets us in so it takes us around the corner a bit. Can you hear okay? That's good. Thank you. How's our time? Okay. Time's okay. So this gives us an opening. This is an entry area, an entry point. So when you have soft edges that come against each other, even hard edges, but you have a way of entering, visually entering into a space, um, then it allows the viewer to get involved. It takes them into the painting. And that's an important little area right there. And I take the edge of that roof out again, just with a little bit of light, right there. Yeah, that's better. And maybe I can pop in a little more color in a couple of spots here. I don't know how I ended up with that green up in the roof right here but I can just take it out just like that that's one of the joys of working with oil if we were working in acrylic we would have to paint over an area by now because it would already be dry just going to define the top of that peak of that roof a little more And maybe come in with a little more sky up in there. Now, it's funny because I think the whole program today was about painting what we, you know, what we don't see. And or painting around the things we do see. Maybe that's a better way to put it. Um, all of that stuff is just background. It's peripheral. And because it is, it supports what's going on here. So our eyes are drawn to where there's activity. That's, that's what's happening here. And it still holds. It still feels like, you know, this could be a real place. And this is a real scene. I don't have to show all the information. It's not necessary. I just want to make sure there's enough here that it feels like, okay, I get the mood of this. I... I'm interested in the feeling and the mood of this. I'm going to bring in a few more little branches and it's going to be, I think it'll be there. I, I'm not going to try and take this too much further. You can see I'm not trying to finish 
each branch. That doesn't make sense because we don't see it that way in real life. We, we don't see all the details. Uh, right now, I'm just kind of dropping in some textures that, that are broken textures. Um, just using a brush that, you know, is kind of, uh, well, it's kind of messy and floppy. It's not, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't leave very specific marks when you use it sideways like this. Um, and I like that because there's kind of a random quality to it. It's kind of like a palette knife that way. Palette knife will do that. Just gives me texture, gives me things that don't, they're not important except that they create the sense or the essence of what might be there. It creates detail without really being detailed. And this area down in here, right there, I think is getting a little too much attention. And yes, it is in the foreground, but I'm just going to take a wet brush now and I'm just going to knock that back just so that it softens that, softens this area here as well. Now we've kind of got, you know, a circle that's going here. We can come into this painting through a different couple of different locations through this area here and work our way back and think about the the action or the movement of if you were walking into this scene which way would you approach it? You know from that side or this side um, and let your brush follow that action. Keeping the values fairly close and very soft back here, that gives you that sense of distance. That's what, what's happening there. And I want to do one thing here. I'm going to pick up a little bit of light against this tree right here. And that light is as light as the sky. Right there. And that's about all the detail you need in an area like that. Okay. Uh, I want to go in with a big brush now, and I'm going to go into the, into the areas behind here. Um, this will end up being a bigger painting than I thought it would be, um, because I want to keep this sort of horizontal feeling to this. And... In doing this, I can also, you know, when I frame this, if this gets framed, it has a nice horizontal quality to it this way. I want to, I want to sort of have the feeling that I can almost hear nature in this. I want to hear some birds back in here. I'm starting to sound like Bob Ross, sorry. But if you can kind of get a sense or a feeling for what's here, then when you're painting it, then your brush follows the things that you feel. If that makes any sense. Um, it's okay to be loose with this stuff without getting crazy. Hold, if you hold your brush like this, by the way, um, it's a nice, as opposed to this, when you hold your brush this way, um, your, your movements are much tighter. But when you hold your brush like this, your whole arm gets involved. And it's a, a lot more free. The, the motion is a lot freer. I just want to take some of the importance away from these areas right here. So the eye comes over this way more. There we go.
having a few soft edges that helps I'm going to go back in again with a couple more crisp details into these areas here just over top of that softness let the palette knife do its thing okay Um, this is a real place in, in Nova Scotia and Canada. Maybe I can convince some of my Austrian German friends to come to Canada and paint here. I've, they have several cabins, and maybe we should just do a, a painting workshop there. Let's get away from all the rush of life and focus on doing some creative work out there. I think it would be great. I would love that. All right. I need, I feel like I need to punch in. Well, I don't want to get too crazy in color here. There's probably enough going. Um, I'm going to hit the sky with a little more opaque paint right in here. One of the advantages of mixing it ahead of time is you can come back to the color and you can put that in where you need it just to punch it up. And I'm looking at it on my screen. Um, it's looking okay. It's not too bad. Uh, Carl, good question. Um, yes, uh, this would be varnished later. I would let this dry for probably a good, you know, well, four to, four to eight weeks. I would say a month to two months. Um, and then going over top of it all, varnish brings it all together, it brings all the, the highlights and shadows and everything into relative terms. When you paint something when, and it's wet, uh, it looks right when it's wet. And then when it dries, you end up with flat areas and you end up with areas that are, you know, shiny. So you want to have some consistency to your painting as if it had just been painted. So if you wanted, to, for example, to make it look wet, you would use a gloss varnish. Um, I tend to like something that's sort of semi-gloss or maybe even semi-matte. So it's not really shiny, it's not really dull, somewhere in between. If you do a varnish that's very uh, shiny onto dark colors, it almost works like a mirror and, and that can be very distracting. So that's just something to think about um, when you're varnishing. You want to be careful that it doesn't mean that you can't change your varnish, by the way. So you can either have a, you can remove the varnish if you want to, or you can just paint a flatter varnish over top of something that's too glossy. And that works as well. So um, varnishing something is, is an art also in itself. Uh, getting that right, it's good to read up on that. Okay, I'm just going to bring a little more of that cool green over, and that's about it. I think I'm going to call it. When I get to this point where I start getting really fussy about things, um, I, I don't want to ruin it. When I say ruin it, I don't want to lose the freshness of it. Um, so that's just something that's to keep in mind, um, you know, I can take a couple of, I can take a couple of colors and just, you know, you can put some random color in just to, to bring areas up a bit, but you have to be careful when you do this, that it doesn't start to overpower everything you've done. So I'm going to leave it. I think uh, as far as I will go on this today, um, I'm hoping that was informative and that you guys enjoyed this i'll come back to you i'll i'll post this on the facebook the finished piece so you can see it in more detail um and again this is sort of like painting painting what isn't there i mean i've painted a few things that are there within my photo reference um but um 
really I've, I've just tried to work with a sense of atmosphere and a sense of, of depth and excuse me tried to um, you know bring light into it a sense of light and, and a path that takes you in and most of this painting is peripheral you know there's a few little details you don't need a whole bunch to make it work I'm going for the mood and that's something to really think about when you're painting try and go for the mood of what you're looking at uh, what is the feeling you get from it uh, and if you can do that uh, then other people will get the feeling when they're looking at it as well so uh, thank you for joining me today I really appreciate uh, you showing up sorry for the technical difficulties again a um, couple of times it cut out and uh, if it cuts out again now I'll just disappear but um, um, anyhow thank you um, if you like this please give me a thumbs up um, please share this with others I uh, really do appreciate when you uh, when you do share this with other people I'm still trying to get all the way up to um, you know the 500 subscription point um, I have to find you know more creative ways to get attention I guess um, but I'm relying on you guys those who know about this and also I need to announce it more I guess so that more people show up when we get to the 500 mark someone's going to get a painting and uh, uh, a free painting which is kind of fun um, and uh, we'll see see if we can't encourage more people to sign on Stefan thanks and was happy to paint and have you watch Rita thanks for joining in um, I really do appreciate it uh, Sasha all of you it was really great to have you here uh, sharing this with me and I had fun painting it's a beautiful day in Toronto right now um, the sun's shining and after this I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna cut the lawn um, because you know there's things to do around the house as well but I really enjoyed uh, working on this and I, again I hope that you you've learned something be well take care stay safe and um, we will see you next week uh, all if all is well um, have a great uh, evening uh, and happy painting take care bye bye